purpose of this activity is to demonstrate to students using the context of colonial markets for indentured servants that prices emerge from the choices made by individual people. As students participate in the simulation, they will discover that the four-year length of indenture mentioned in their textbooks was not the result of whim or decree, but an agreed-upon price that emerged spontaneously from the voluntary interactions of people participating as buyers and sellers in a market. The lesson plan for this activity is available at FTE.org and it contains all the visuals, materials, and even a detailed historical background to help you prepare to facilitate this activity. You will need yellow emigrant cards for half of the students and blue agent cards for the other half, an individual record and score sheet for each student, and candy or some reward for students to purchase with their game points. You will also want to clear an open space in the room where the market can take place. Show a sample indentured contract and ask students to speculate on why the indenture length was about four years. Accept a variety of answers, list them on the board, and tell students that the activity will test these hypotheses. In this activity, you're gonna be emigrants, which are gonna be you guys with yellow cards, everybody on this half of the room. Split the class and in half, you, you giving half the students blue agent cards and the other half yellow emigrant cards. Agents are trying to recruit indentured servants for colonists wanting labor. Emigrants are Europeans considering the possibility of going to the colonies. You want passage to the New World, and you want to make that contract for the shortest amount of time possible, because that's what you're paying with, right? So you want to try to get the shortest indenture possible. You're going to get points for short contracts. So everybody has a score sheet that's white. Go ahead and look at your score sheet. And I want you to fold it in half, because there's actually two score sheets on here. The bottom one is for the emigrants, for you guys with yellow, so flip yours to the bottom half. That's the side you're going to focus on for this part of the activity. And we'll get to you guys in a minute, but you guys are going to be the top half of the score sheet. Have students read their roll card carefully. Explain that the cards are different and students have different goals and point incentives. Go through a sample calculation for an emigrant and for an agent and field any questions the students might have. Okay, emigrants, on your half of the score sheet, you'll notice that there's a place where you're going to write down your worker classification, how long you, the contract is that you agree to. On your information card, it's going to tell you how many points you can earn for different lengths of contracts. So you'll write down any points you earn. Some of your yellow cards might reference bonus points. If that's applicable, you would put those in here. If not, don't worry about that. And then your total points earned would be any points for your contract plus bonus points. That would be your total points. You're looking for points. You know, points equal gains for you guys. That mean, uh, means you made a better deal than you were hoping. Okay, on the other side of the room, we have captains or agents. So these could be ship captains. They could be agents that maybe, you know, people contracted with to go out and find them labor. Um, so captain or agent roll cards are, are blue. Um, they are trying to make a deal for the longest term possible because the longer that contract is, is made for, the more you're going to be able to sell it for. Somebody, it's going to be more valuable to a potential buyer. Um, you can earn profits with longer deals. So ship captains and agents, your roll cards um, are on, on blue, and on here it explains what you're looking for, where you're going, where your ship is going, how much it's worth to you, how much different types of labor are worth to you. On the top half of the score sheet, that's the one for you guys, there's a place where you can record the worker classification, how long the contract is that you agree to, and their, the value to you, that's going to come from your blue card. So here's an example of, of, of the value that you guys might place on different types of contracts. So there's different classifications of workers out there um, because some workers are more skilled. Explain the procedures workers. and rules. Students can only make one transaction per round. When they make a deal, the agent will report the length of the contract to the teacher so it can be recorded. Students should sit down after they've made a transaction so those still in the market are the only ones standing. All right, any, any other questions? It's one big labor market. Market's open. Go. Run the first round of the activity. Okay, Once you have a deal, take a seat so they can see who's left in the market. How long? Six and a half years. Got it. Three and a half years. Got it. Six years. As agents are reporting them, and try to listen for specific student interactions that you can discuss during the debrief. Six years. Allow the round to run for several minutes or until most students have made a transaction. 
call time and have the remaining students return to their seats, asking why they weren't able to make a transaction. All right, time's up. This round is over. Have a seat. Was there anybody who couldn't find, just couldn't make a deal, couldn't get a contract? Here and here and here? Did you try? Yeah. And what, what was the problem? Often immigrants will report that they didn't want to sign a long contract or agents will report that they were looking for someone with more skills or they couldn't find someone willing to go to the less desirable West Indies. Either way, point out that not participating is okay. In fact, it's a good thing. Market participation is voluntary, which means that people will participate when their expected benefits are greater than the expected costs. If that wasn't the case, participating in the market would actually make them worse off. Walk around and see if any students need help or have questions about the score sheet. Before beginning round two, have students trade roll cards with another student holding the same color. Give them time to read their new scenario and goals and then play another round. And everybody with the yellow, switch with the yellow. All right, any questions before we start the next round? Okay, you know how it works. Go, markets open. skilled workers this time? Same. Same? Any skilled workers that weren't able to find transportation to the new world? No? Okay. Who else? Um, and what did you notice that was different about that round compared to the first round? I noticed that as soon as I said go, it was loud and fast and I heard people going, ones and twos, I'm looking for <laughs> right? Did you have to spend as much time kind of searching a little bit. You kind of knew, like, if you were trying to get somebody to sign on for 20 years, was that going to happen, blue cards? And if, if you, somebody was trying to get you to sign on for, like, a year, did you know that you could do better than that? You kind of had an idea what the bounds were, you know, like what the, what the market would bear, um, for lack of a better word. We're going to do, do it one more time, but this time I'm going to let you completely change roles. And instead for round three, have students card trade cards with someone holding the other color. So now they get to experience the other side of the market. Okay, blue card. Do you guys have any questions? Ready to go? All right, market's open. Go. Take anybody. Four years. Easier or harder? Playing the other side. Then in round four, have them switch with another person with the same color so they get a second chance at that new role. Okay, are we ready? Market's open, round four. Highlight these things in your debrief. The process of negotiating for indentures was a form of labor market, but it was simultaneously a market for passage to America. Help them identify who the buyers and sellers are in each market, as well as the currency they were paying with. In the labor market, emigrants are the sellers. Agents and ship captains are the buyers, and they are paying for labor with passage to America. In the market for the passage to America, agents and captains were the sellers, whereas emigrants were the buyers, and they were paying for passage to America with their labor. The length of four years is an average price that emerged from the interactions of buyers and sellers but there was a range of mutually beneficial contract links that occurred because participants valued things differently and they faced different opportunity costs. Ask for a show of hands of all those who gained in this market and have them look around and see all the raised hands. Close by emphasizing that voluntary participation in markets makes participants better off and this is how markets create wealth.